Yusuf Salam was one of the teens that the media dubbed the Central Park Five, who were falsely accused and wrongly imprisoned for the rape of a white female jogger. Now, in 2002, they were finally exonerated, and today, Yosef continues his fight to reform the justice system that failed him. As a New York City councilman, yeah. take a look. While I was a teenager sitting in a cell, forgotten by the masses, it was my family and my community that made sure that wasn't the end of my journey. My liberation represented the collective efforts of many of you standing here right now and tonight begins my opportunity to free us from being overlooked That's and right. underserved. Yes. Please welcome back Yusuf Salam. The country is honoring the legacy of MLK today. And few can speak to the harms of being judged just by the color of your skin, rather than the content of their character more than you. Mm -hmm. What does MLK Day mean to you? You know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he did so much to plant seeds into the future of what America could be. I remember reading a, a, a speech that he made where he said, when you find your purpose in life, do it as if God himself called you to do it at this very moment. Mm -hmm. I took that to heart. I knew that as I looked back at the journey that I came through, that God had strategically prepared me yeah. to be able to survive with my mind intact yes. in order to do what was necessary. Yes. And I know there's so much more to do. Oh, yeah. And I'm so thankful for that. Oh, well, wow. With all that you have left to do, I will start by saying, Councilman, <laughs> you were fully exonerated in 2002. Yes. But you say it wasn't until just a few years ago um, when the Netflix miniseries, When They See Us, Telling Your Story, was released in 2019, that you felt like your reputation was finally restored. Why was that so pivotal for you? It was pivotal because... Young people saw themselves in our story. And so I think the full circle moment was for young people to see themselves in our story, mm. to begin to understand why it's not cool to go to prison, yeah. that they are designing your life for you. Some would say by the time you're in the third and fourth grade. You know, now when I walk around my community and young people, I've, most beautiful experience I had, a young child was walking across the street and their mother was on the phone. And the young child kept on pulling the mother's jacket and she was like, what, 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 what? That's Yusef Salam." And I was shocked that this young person connected with me, connected with me, saw me. We had to stay, stop and take a photo and it was a oh. really beautiful oh. moment. <laughs> You've long been an advocate for criminal justice reform, and you've worked for years with the Innocence Project, something that a lot of people don't know about, to help free others who have been wrongfully imprisoned. And you say that the criminal justice system has not changed no, no. much since you were not only wrongfully arrested, mm. you were <coughs> interrogated without your mother, you were 15, I believe, and you were wrongfully convicted. Now, why haven't we made more progress? what needs to be done to fix this very broken system. Mm -hmm. I know it's, a, it's heavy, but like, particularly when it comes to policing of black people. So I can only begin to answer your question with something that my mother told me when I was 15. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that portrayal of my mother through Angelou Ellis coming into the interrogation room and reaching in and grabbing me out of the clutches of the enemy was so powerful. Yeah. What my mother told me in that moment was that they need you mm. to participate right. in whatever it is they are trying to do. Mm. Do not participate. She urged me, mm -hmm. refuse. Yeah. She was teaching me, in essence, what Stand Your Ground was before we even mm. heard about Stand Your Ground. Mm. And so I think the important part is that, you know, when we look at it from a bird's eye view, we can see the forest. 
But if we're right there, we're dealing with the struggles and the rigors of life. Somebody might say, well, let me just do this one thing. Mm. But you do a one thing, you step in the direction of one thing. As they say, if you pick up one end of the stick, you automatically pick up the other. Mm. And so we have to project ourselves, I think, into the future of our own lives, especially young people. They have to see themselves. Like, when they see a young Yusuf Salam, mm -hmm. they see a 15-year-old child. Yeah. I'm gonna be 50 <laughs> next year. Wow. Oh, we're, we're in this year. <laughs> I'm going to be 50 in February, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we project ourselves into a future like that, what does that mean? I think that means that we see ourselves. Mm. My good friend Les Brown said, if you can't see it, That's right. you can't yeah. be it. Yeah. Yep. So we have to see ourselves mm -hmm. as the future. And then more than that, our children's 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 yes. children. 